What's up everybody and welcome to Hoist Talk. Today we're going to be talking about lap timers and telemetry systems and in particular what I have used in the past. Now a little bit of housekeeping rules. The kids are upstairs asleep, the wife is upstairs asleep and I can't really be too loud or rowdy. Um, the next thing is this is not a product review post. This is almost a vlog or a podcast or whatever you want to call it of my personal experience with my car using whatever I could afford or get my hand on at the time um, of whatever I was using, right? So very informal, let's get stuck straight into it. Let me give you the history of what I started using and why, and how I ended up to where I am now. Probably say 12 to 13 years ago, there weren't many options in terms of lap timing. You could either get yourself a must be infrared or laser based or something or another lap timer, where you put one part of it on your car, one part of, one part of it at the start finish line, and as you cross, it starts logging times. Never used them, will never use them, not interested in them. But I did end up getting my hands on a secondhand affordable race logic performance box. And I think there was a variant of it called a drift box, which also captured your angle. That race logic uh, performance box was GPS based, it was 10 hertz, very accurate. Once you get it going, super easy to use. You simply uh, stick it onto your windscreen with the suction cups and off she goes. It had its own software, which is Circuit Tools that runs on Windows. So if you're like me and you had Mac, unfortunately you needed a second laptop or you needed to run parallels. But for all intensive purposes, it was a great system. And I used that for many, many years, longer than anything else I've had. So. I would say a good seven years or more was using that same race logic um, drift box. I think I had a drift box that I picked up on eBay for a few hundred dollars. They were not cheap brand new, they were over a thousand dollars, which is still expensive today. Um, but again, there weren't any other options out there. Its only flaw was it didn't have predictive lap timing. And I know that in later firmware updates, they did have predictive lap timing, but you needed a PhD degree in IT to get that working. And I, I'm just not smart enough to get that done. After the race logic drift box, I started dabbling with using a phone. So Harry's lap timer, I think was the first one I tried. Not very accurate, especially when pairing it with your phone and it just didn't work at all for me. So I purchased an external GPS module that you would connect to your phone. And that was fairly cool because in my BMW M140i, I could do a mirror cast and replicate or cast my screen from my mobile phone onto the, the entertainment screen for the car. And it looked pretty cool as you'll see in this video. However, when linking everything up, it was a little bit annoying because sometimes the GPS doesn't connect to the phone properly, sometimes the phone doesn't connect to the car properly, and then a lot of times the data was, was invalid or corrupt. So you couldn't really rely on it. I'm not a fan of that system at all, and I was in a very desperate state to find an alternative because at that point I sold my um, race logic item but to me, there were more cons in terms of complexity and you're about to go onto the track, you're trying to connect everything, shit doesn't work, you go out and you don't have any timing. Um, but it did give you a predictive, unlike the race logic item. After, I guess, a, a year or two of, of putting up with that, a Kickstarter program was, was shared around and it was a product called Racebox. This Racebox was very similar to the Drift Box probably a little bit of crossover, not sure how they went with, um, with, with that for copyright, but 
The race box was a standalone unit that you connect to your windscreen using a GoPro suction cup and it was fantastic. GPS based, had predictive lap timing on display, very accurate, very reliable, super, super easy to use, idiot proof. And the best thing about it is that it had its own web-based program um, and its own phone app. So after you do your sessions, you connect your phone to the race box, it syncs up and you can see your time and your lap on your phone and that will automatically put it onto the cloud. So once you go to the Racebox website, you can overlay and see the different laps and how you went. Cannot rate that system any higher. By far, the easiest system I've ever had and the most reliable system I've ever had. It also gave you the opportunity to export files in .vbo format, which is the format for RaceLogic. And that seems to be the most widely adopted format for data files, so you could overlay um, race box onto Harry's lap timer if you export as .vbo onto the race logic which is the the, po the people who created that .vbo format. All the data was compatible, happy days and by that time circuit tools which belongs to race logic uh, was released on Mac so you don't have to have two different laptops or two different computers one for your personal life if you use Mac and one for the car um, and there was another app called track attack which was really nice to use so everything was going well. There was one flaw with the race box, which is that it didn't have the telemetry other than GPS and G-forces. Natural progression for track guy or track girl, you get faster and faster, you start getting driver coaches and you start getting race engineers and then those guys and girls start asking you for more. They say to you, what about, you know, do you log brake pressure, do you log accelerator pedal, you're jumping onto the brake too hard, you're getting onto the accelerator too soon, and you can't see any of that. You can only hear it, but you can't really see in what's going on if you don't have that data. You end up being put in a position where you either get a race logic video box, which is amazing, it has cameras and everything, but it is super expensive. Motec, which is again expensive, uh, or in my case, I went with the AIM Solo DL2. And this is a what I'm using now. GPS connects uh, reasonably quickly if you have it mounted in the right space. And it connects to the CAN bus to the car so it logs everything. The other thing that I like about this is it has LED lights on the side. So we have it programmed where a green LED is 0.1 faster than your predictive or, or your best lap, your best previous lap. And if it's red, then you're 0.1 seconds slower. So it's a quick way to see how you're going while you're in the middle of, of the lap without having to look at the screen. Pros and cons for the Solo DL2. Pros, it is it captures great amount of data if you have it connected to the car properly. So in my car, you have well over a hundred things that are being recorded, such as temperatures and pressures and steering angles and, and you name it. We even have the tire temperatures and the tire pressures logged through the Team Plus uh, tire turtle, wheel turtle system. It does have quite a lot of information you can see on, on the screen itself. So you can just scroll through and see different things and you can change what you see using the software. However, on the subject of the software, it is only compatible on Windows at the moment. So you go back to needing two computers or if you if you run parallels you can have one computer but every time you switch you, you lose everything huge pain in the ass uh, the software itself is not the most user-friendly software it's very powerful if you know how to use it but it is not an easy system to use and i'm not a very computer literate guy the files that it uploads are not compatible with other systems so you can't compare your lap time with your friends if they're running race boxes or Harry's lap timers or race logic view boxes or whatever. You could only overlay it with aim lap times, which is a, a huge shame because you sometimes sit down with your mates and you're bench racing and you say to them, come on, let's put the data, you're only faster than me because you got 100 more kilowatts and, and all that kind of crap. So great system, very accurate if you know how to use it. It does have its hiccups in real life um, when it doesn't want to play but for the most part, it's, it's a great system. 
My recommendation for anybody who's doing track days that is serious but not super, super, super crazy about it is get the race box. Completely idiot proof, very reliable. Everything's uploaded to the cloud. You're not gonna lose your data. Even if you lose your, your race box or you break it or you lose your phone, everything's uploaded on the cloud. Can't rate it any higher. Um, if you want something that's very serious and you have engineers and you, you wanna really improve your driving, get the aim. If money is not an issue for you, um, get a race logic video box. I've never used it, but my friends do, and that has cameras built into it. It has CAN bus ability to log everything, and it has the right um, file output. And I'm, I'm, I hear a lot of great things about it, but it is like $10,000 in Australia, or a Motec, or, or anything like that. So if you're a first time buyer for a timing system, I hope this helps you choose the right thing, or if you're looking at upgrading what you're currently using. I hope this, this helps um, share at least some experiences. If you have any questions, please share them. If you like this video, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Thank you very much.